No matter if you're a teacher, parent, student, or a business professional, it's imperative you understand how to make using Google Meet an easy and productive experience. After all, if you're going to be staring at the screen for hours on end each day, you might as well learn the ins and outs of Google Meet to actually enjoy your time on video conference meetings. So, in this video, you'll learn how to use Google Meet like a pro, and we'll do that right now. Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Brian White, and welcome back to Video Zeus. On this channel, we produce weekly content for creators, educators, and business professionals, all in an effort to help you spend less time making more videos. If that sounds like you, then smash that subscribe button now. Google Meet is an easy way to keep in touch with those most important to you, whether it be your team, your students, or loved ones. Now, Google Meet works entirely inside your web browser and doesn't require you to download anything to your desktop. There is also a mobile app for Google Meet, which can be downloaded for iOS or Android devices. For the majority of this tutorial, we'll be working inside the web browser application. And should you want additional resources for Google Meet, consider downloading my free Google Meet Cheat Sheet. A link to that will be placed below. If you're new to Google Meet, simply visit meet.google.com to sign into your Google account or create one if you don't already. I'll be using my G Suite Enterprise account, which unlocks all the features included in this video. Before we jump straight into the Google Meet video conferencing interface, I want to first show you one of the major benefits you see when using Google Meet as it integrates with the other tools inside G Suite. For instance, you can start or join a meeting through Gmail, as well as your Google Calendar. Let me show you how to join a meeting through these two apps right quick. Let's first jump into Gmail. Down here on the side panel, we see it labeled Meet with two buttons, one for New Meeting and another for My Meetings. Clicking on the New Meeting opens up a window which contains a share link of the meeting, as well as a phone call-in option for better audio, and also the PIN number for this meeting. Additionally, when you click on this button for Send Invite, you'll be able to copy the meeting invite which contains all the information you see above, the meeting link, call-in number, and PIN number. Clicking on the Share via Email option will open up a composition window inside another Gmail browser, pre-populated with all your meeting details. Back on the New Meeting window, we also have the option to Join Now, which when clicked, launches you into the Meeting Preview area. Let's click out of that and click back onto My Meetings, which opens up an agenda with your upcoming Google Meets you scheduled inside Google Calendar. It allows us to see the appointment details for internal use when it's time for your call. Now, let's switch over to Google Calendar and click on the Create button. A familiar window will appear asking us to title our event and select a date and time. When we click on the button for Add Google Meet Video Conferencing, you can see this arrow indicating a dropdown, which when we do it, it reveals a plethora of additional information about the call, including the meeting ID, dial-in phone numbers, as well as a button to add live stream. All right, now let's show you inside the Google Meet interface. Clicking on Join or Start a Meeting allows you to enter in a meeting code or to start a new meeting by giving it a name or leaving it blank. You can also get into a meeting by clicking on your scheduled meeting right here, which will launch you straight into the preview area as well. Now, no matter how you jump into a meeting, whether it's new, scheduled, or you're just joining one, it'll all bring you to this next screen right here known as the preview area. Think of this preview area as the staging grounds for your meeting. This is where you'll be able to fine tune your meeting settings prior to joining the meeting, all in an effort to start your meeting off on the right foot without having to make participants wait around for you to set it up. Looking at our video window, these little dots down here represent your audio levels, which basically shows you the audio is working via the waveform bouncing up and down like this. To the right of that, we have the microphone and video controls, which can be turned off and on depending if you want to start the call with or without audio and video. If your machine is compatible, you'll also have an icon that looks like this to blur the background behind you. The machine I'm currently using doesn't meet the system requirements for that feature, nor does the blur background feature work on Chromebooks. 
In this corner, we have more options we can click on to open up this menu. We can add the live streaming element to this call by clicking, which will then display the end stream link to be shared accordingly. Also inside this menu, we can add captions to our meeting, which will transcribe on screen anything being spoken in the meeting. I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. Also inside this menu is our settings panel, where we can configure the quality output of our audio and video. If you're using an external microphone, you'll be able to select it here, in which case I'm using the Scarlett Solo audio mixer with my external microphone. So I'll click on that so the audio feeds from my microphone and not the onboard computer mic. An added feature for G Suite users is the ability to apply a sound dampening effect to your audio to help remove any unwanted background noises. Clicking on the video tab allows us to choose which webcam to use. If you have an external webcam, it'll be listed right here, like it is for my Logitech C920 webcam. We can also decide what quality to broadcast our video in. It'll default to a standard definition size of 360 pixels, which is very small, low quality video. Now you have the option of boosting it to an HD signal at 720 as well. Should you experience any lag in the software, try reducing the video quality back to 360 to ensure everyone is seeing and hearing your audio and video clearly. Once you have those settings configured, our meeting is now ready to join. Before we jump into the Join Now button, let me show you around this Present option first. Clicking this button opens up this window asking you which screen you would like to share. This could be a slides presentation, your desktop screen, or a browser application window. It's important to note if you begin a meeting with a presentation, you'll end the meeting with the presentation. There is no way to snap back to a video feed once you've selected the Present Now at the start of the meeting. Back at the Staging Grounds page, Let's click on Join Now to enter our meeting space. Once here, you'll see this window pop up asking you to add others, which you can do so by copying and sending others this meeting link. Or you can add people in your contact sphere by locating them via name or email. Keep in mind, anyone you invite using this copied meeting link will have to request permission before entering your meeting. Anyone you invite through email can join the meeting without asking for permission. Once you're done with this window, you can click the X to close it. Now we're inside the official meeting interface of Google Meet. Let me show you what all these buttons do. We'll start in the lower left-hand corner of the screen where it says Meeting Details. This allows you, again, to copy the joining information and send it out to other participants. Any attachments included in the calendar item can be found in here. Moving to the right of this is our meeting controls. Similar to the video player in our staging ground, this phone icon ends the meeting, so don't press that until you're ready. Moving along the bottom here, we once again have the option to turn on captions. The difference here being you can actually see what they look like and how well the AI works when transcribing your video. If you're using captions, remember to speak slowly and clearly to allow it to transcribe properly. We have the option to begin presenting by clicking on this button right here. Now, I previously showed you how to join a meeting with the presentation already enabled. I recommend starting the meeting, then starting the presentation. Now, clicking on these dots will open up the More Options menu. Up here, we have the option to add a whiteboard element, which enables you the ability to create what is called a Jamboard document, which can be shared on Google Jamboards if applicable. All right, back inside this menu, we also have the option to record meetings. All right, back inside this menu and below the recording feature, we have the option to change layout. This allows you to change the way you view your meeting. Clicking into the settings window is no different than the settings window on the staging grounds page. You'll have an option to select an external microphone and of course the video settings to choose which webcam to use and what video resolution to broadcast and receive. Also inside this menu, you have the option to, to join the meeting audio with your phone. This can come in handy to provide better audio and allow you to be mobile while still on a call. Now let's direct our attention to the top right corner of the screen where we'll see this icon right here. This one right here will identify all participants inside the meeting. It'll also allow you to add participants to the meeting by inviting them through email. Also, you can click on this chat icon right here to open up the group chat feature. During your meeting, you and other participants can chat inside this panel here. 
Once the meeting is over, you can simply click the red phone icon here to leave the meeting or end it as a host. If for some reason you click this by accident, you'll be able to click right here to rejoin the meeting or simply return to the home screen. In order to add some flair to your Google Meet, you may want to explore using a virtual background. Unfortunately, there is currently no option for virtual backgrounds in Google Meet. However, there is a third-party Chrome extension available called Visual Effects for Google Meet that can be installed that allows you to add background elements to your video feed with or without a green screen. If you haven't already downloaded my Google Meet cheat sheet, please do so in the show notes below. This guide includes my personal tips and tricks, gear recommendations, and best practices for getting the most out of Google Meet video conferencing. Once again, thanks for watching Video Zeus, helping you spend less time making more videos.